What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Chris Purpose, back at it again with another Gems of War Faction Assault video for you guys. So we got a reworked faction of Lariz's Lair this week. So we're going to be taking a look at that deep delve and showcasing a couple teams or three for this faction right here. So let's take a look at this first team. Up front on the team, we're going to have Phoenix. Phoenix is a War Gear Divine with a 22 mana cost of yellow, purple, and brown. The spell is Seek or Destroy. It has the ability to choose one deal, true damage to all enemies, or it has the ability to choose as well to summon one to three Volfire Hunters. The traits are Fox Cunning. It will start battles with 25% mana. It has Revered. So all allies will gain two random skill points. And it has Phoenix's Blessing. It will bless and enchant a random ally when matching four or more gems. Now, I love going down the true damage route when it comes on to any team. And in this particular faction, we have the option of using this troop as well as other true damagers, which I'm going to showcase later on. Right? So the weapon of choice on this team is, of course, the Wand of Stars. The Wand of Stars is particularly good in factions why because it has the ability of blessing all allies or cursing all enemies now when you look at that you're wondering why is this beneficial because sometimes in factions there are troops that could death mark your troops or troops that could submerge based on the damage that they take so um you know when you curse an enemy you actually take away all their positive status effects so if they are if they're submerged if they're buried if they're blessed you're going to take that away from them right which is going to allow you to then hit them with your spell damage or your skull damage if you choose to go down that route and definitely if your death marked or any other not negative status effects are on your troops you're able to remove those by blessing your troops when your troops are blessed all negative status effects will be removed from them. So if they are, you know, poisoned or death marked or lycanthropied or whatever, you know, it's going to be removed from the troops. Along with that, the Divine Shabal is going to be on this team. As you guys are noticing here, this is a complete Divine team, except for the Leprechaun at the back of the team. So Divine Shabal is the troop that gives a 40% start to Divines. And I want to say it again, devs, change this back to 50%. There is no reason for this troop to be having a 40% uh, mana start to Divines in this day and age. Divines are not so much of a threat anymore in the current state of the game. So this needs to be changed for sure. Of course, if you want to as well, you can actually cast Divine Shabala's spell, which is Divine Dance. You will transform red gems to skulls and all green gems to yellow, which could get your Phoenix spell ready if indeed you need to cast it a second time and you don't want to cast the Wand of Stars. So keep that in mind that you can. Along with that as well, she will enchant and um, she will enchant two random allies, which is very, very good. Right, so the banner on this team is going to be the Dark Fae banner from the Dark Court faction, right? That's a plus two on purple, plus one on yellow. In fact, I might change it around. Let's go a plus two on yellow and a plus one on purple. That makes a lot more sense. The fell banner right here from the fell roast faction, right? Plus two on yellow, plus one on purple, minus in green, only the wand of stars uses green and leprechaun explodes green at the start of the battle. So yeah. All right, so I'm hoarded up a significant amount on this fight, so I'm going to really be able to go really far with this. And I think that if you're uh, deciding to go for all your rewards on this faction assault, you should be able to get there with this team. In fact, very, very easily. All right, let's go. There it is. So Phoenix is able to blow through her fights very fast because once you go down that true damage route, you avoid all their armor on the enemy team, right? You're able to go right for it and um, hit their HP directly, and that is good. You know, you don't want to waste time. I'm sure that, like me, not a lot of persons have all the time in the world to play a faction and pick up the rewards. You just want to get to it. You don't want to do too much. And um, I think that this team really allows for that. Once I get to the boss room here, I'm just going to move on to another team um, and switch things over for you guys. All right, let's see if we can get that div that damage. There we go. Almost said devour there. <laughs> I think my mind isn't here completely. Um, of course, you can use the Elementalist class if you want to, or Titan. I just wanted to go down the route of a more divine team. It kind of makes your troops a little bit more bulky as a result, because you're going to get different life from the talents in the class, as well as you're going to get some bonuses for having multiple divine troops on the team. 
Yeah, there we go. We got spell ready without even casting Leprechaun. And that's one of the good things about putting your main damage dealer, that's a mythic, at the top of the team. Because many times if you have a spell of a, not, not a spell, but a, um, a storm, the storm can benefit the troop a lot and get it spell ready. So yeah, that is the first team I wanted to show you guys with Phoenix, Wand of Stars, Divinish Bala, and Leprechaun. Gonna, next team is going to be up. the second team. Which is going to be good for going from possibly level 200 all the way up to level 500 here. And it should be a very potent option. So up front on this team, we're going to be having the Wand of Stars. The Wand of Stars is going to be here for the second half of the spell, creating those Umbral Stars. Umbral Stars are basically yellow and um, I think it's yellow and purple gems that match also with yellow and purple gems. And along with that, I'm going to be cursing enemies. Now, the cursing along with the matching of those yellow gems is going to be very useful for this team because cursed enemies, once they are cursed, they are no longer immune to any status effects. So if they were impervious or they had fortitude or they were immune to poison or stun or whatever the, it might be, it's no longer immune after it is cursed. Why this is important? Because I'm going to be using the old meta team right here of Scorpius and your rally on this team i'm going to be poisoning enemies and then instant killing them with my scorpius um this is going to be a very potent option and i don't know if players are paying attention that this team is is possible in in delves it's going to be one of the better teams to use in delves for this team as well i'm using the shaman hero class why because the shaman hero class is a 50 percent start right there bullish vigor all taurus allies start with 50 percent mana and along with that, the Taurus hero class has Dawn's Aura, which is creating a light storm at the start of battle, a yellow storm, which is going to be good for those umbral stars that I'm putting on the board. Along with that, it has Lightbringer and a couple other decent uh, talents in the class. Scorpius is going to be in the second slot right here, followed by Urali in the third slot. And then Leprechaun at the back of the team is going to be giving me fast mana. The banner on this team, I think it should be the same, right? Yeah, the Fell banner from the Fell Roost faction. All right, so let's try this out. Hopefully, the board is functioning here and working with me so that I can get the necessary motion. All right, let's get those explosions at the start. Now you can cast a wand, right? We want to get those Umbral Stars to give us a four gem match. And along with that, we'll get the enemies poisoned and cursed. Oh, we didn't get it. So we're going to try again. We are going to try again. Let's see if we can match something here to give us a four. We just need one four gem match. Come on. There we go. There we go. Cursed. So they're poisoned as well. Come. Then we can just cast whatever because they're already poisoned. Bang. There we go. We got it. We got it. It didn't happen the first time, but the second time around, perfection. Perfection. Of course, the class, I think, as well should have a root trap. But I did not have it set here. So you can adjust the class. I think you possibly take out either the leading light or the brilliant aura and put in that root trap, right? You want to have the first enemy entangled just in case um, so that they don't hit you with skulls if the wand misses. All right, so here is another fight. Let's see if we can get that umbral stars to match here. Didn't get it to give us a four gem match, but they're, all, they're already cursed. So that's good. Come on, give me one more. There we go. We got it this time. There we go. Got it. And then you can follow up and do whatever you want to just get your troops spell ready. It doesn't really matter to get those four gem matches anymore. Ooh, such a bad miss, man. Sometimes it happens, but we'll, we'll be fine. Let's get Cor Scorpius powered up. There we go. We have him. Now let's kill him. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That was good. All right, let's move on here and go to another fight. This is going to be a legendary room. Let's see if we can get a quick win off of this one. I really want to showcase this moving smoother because I've used it before, and it's a very smooth team. It gets the job done. But, of course, the wand is, wand is the wand. You know how it is. I don't think I need to curse anybody here. Here we go with the, with the wand missing again. All right, let's get an explosion. And can I get a 4 plus gem match now? There we go, we got him. Kill two. Let's cast this again. Almost got the wand here. 
There we go. We have the wand and we have Scorpius. Kill him. That's it. So once you come across a room in which somebody, some troop there is impervious, like for example, this one right here, the Manticore, this troop is impervious. Let's see if we can make it happen against this. And of course, they're going to change up the storm on us here um, because Larissa has a, I think she has a, uh, she has the Madness Storm, right? There we go. Did we get them cursed? Yup. We got them cursed and we have every single one ready to kill. There we go. We got Scorpius. Yes, we did. Kill that troop at the bottom. Perfect, man. This one's working out a little bit better. Hopefully it works again. Yeah, we got him. Nice. Not bad. There we go. <laughs> very, very good here. Because sometimes the one can be not very dependable. So I'm sometimes scary when I'm approaching these fights. And um, let's see what's inside this. Some shards. That's fine. All right. So that is team number two for the higher levels. Hopefully I can get up another team and showcase to you guys i'll be right be the team for the final levels of the faction um i like to use iron gut anytime i'm in a delve it just feels good this sucker is he, he just comes alive basically in delves right cam i think so i think he comes alive hiking iron gut is going to be at the top of this team i think everybody should know this troop by now goblin troop from zajin with a 24 mana cost uh, blue, yellow, and of course brown. His spell is in the pot. He's going to deal damage to an enemy. And there's a chance, based on its attack, to devour them, right? And then he has an extra turn, which is very, very good. His traits are not so potent, but that spell is so good. Just get it to 100, and this sucker is going to devour. At least get it close to it, and get him a chance to devour at least once. And he's just going to absorb the amount of attack that they have. And devour going forward especially in delves when you're hoarded up to a really really high level especially if you're going for the leaderboard or you're going to try and complete the faction um, it should be very very easy with this troop at the top of your team thrall is going to be here as well my favorite one of my favorite troops you all know <laughs> i love to use thrall right human troop with a six mana cost suffering is the spell destroying a certain amount of gems taking a small amount of damage if there are 13 or more red gems on the board extra turn for your guy Thrall, and along with that, he has a magic link gaining bonus purple mana from purple gem matches. Catharisk is going to be on this team as well. This is the newest boss troop, I think, in the game. Um, Tides of Destruction is the spell. He's going to kill an, en an enemy similar to Zulgat. I could use Zulgat on this team as well, but you know, I want to switch things up and use Catharisk. Um, kill an enemy, then he's going to be creating six curse gems, six yellow giant gems, and six fairy fire gems an okay spell sometimes it can backfire a lot um but we're gonna use it nonetheless manifestation is his final trait and he's impervious as well with a 30 mana cost the wand of star is going to be in the back of the team here as a you know backup option to cleanse the allies just in case for example my hiking iron gut gets death marked or something <laughs> like that uh, you know i really want to get rid of it cast the wand of stars for that bless and then everything is going to be ruined um the class here is the Orb Weaver class. Why Orb Weaver? Because it has the ability to root trap the first enemy and it has a purple storm. That's why I'm using it um, because I want to get Thrall spell ready very quickly so I can cast him and get everybody else spell ready. That's the main reason. And if I have those potions of explosion, get a couple explosion, a couple purple gems cascade on the board, and there we go. My Thrall will be spell ready. The banner should be here the same as I had before. No, this one is going to be the, the Dark Fey banner, right? From the Dark Court faction, plus two purple. And Thrall already has a, a purple link. So, yeah, it's going to go fast. Let's hop into the fight. This is a level 500 fight. So just so you guys can see that I'm using these in high levels, not low levels. And as I said before, Thrall is spell ready. Cast Thrall. Everybody is ready. You see what I mean? So that's the main focus. Let's do this. Then we use this one to kill that one. Then go after them again with my um, with my Iking Iron Gut. Then the last troop, shoot them down. Bang. Yep. This is a really good high-level team. Um, you shouldn't have a problem here, especially because you have the Wand of Stars mixed with Hiking Iron Gut with an instant killer and Big Boy Thrall is on the team. Should be no problem. Let's hop into another fight. All right, the Spider Nest. That's where we're going. Cam, you don't like spiders, right? Mm-hmm. Let's get a Devour going. Cast that one again. Get another Devour. 
will be good with these devours. Let's hit him up with some damage. Hiking Iron got good again. And, you know, Katarisk is putting two gem colors on the board that can benefit your Hiking Iron God. Hiking Iron God uses yellow mana. Hiking Iron God also uses brown mana. And Katharisk is putting those yellow uh, giant gems on the board along with those um, brown, what are they called? Curse gems. Yes, those curse gems on the board. Right, let's hop into the ice cave and see if we can make this a quick one. So hopefully you guys and gals found these teams helpful and informative. If you did, smash the like button and comment and let me know what you guys think about these teams all right let's get some munching going on here hiking iron gut again more munching want to cast gut once more then kill the last troop extra turn oh and we picked up a death below isn't that beautiful excellent rng on these final fights excellent rng all right so we're at the uh the boss room let's go let's go let go All right, we got some explosion. Didn't get Thrall spell already. We had to match a gem, but that's fine. Let's go. Thrall. Now some devouring. Thrall again. Devour some more. Now kill that first troop at the top. See if we can get a cascade. We didn't get it, but it's fine. Let's thrall once more. Devour. And yeah, that is uh, that is that team. It's pretty fast team for clearing out higher level fights especially if you're hitting like three level 300 and higher definitely run down it with it run run it down with a team like this it should be very very good um yeah so that is it hopefully you guys found this video helpful and informative let's go back over the final team again hiking iron got the top of the team hoard up to a decent level in the faction go to the underworld or buy up your power potions and you should be able to execute this faction easily with this big guy at the top of the team he has some disgusting bumps on the side of his shoulders though but he's still good all right thrall is going to be here as well followed by katharisk the most recent boss troop added and then the wonder stars at the back of the team with the orb weaver class as i said if you found this helpful definitely smash the like button comment to let me know what you guys think and of course share it with your guildmates so come on over and check out the pvp teams the guild wars teams the explore teams the delve teams and everything else that's on the channel all right guys catch y'all next one peace